Wembley's their dream destination. There's no silverware up for grabs, but a place in the first division is the prize. One boss leads from the front and walks a thin line to success. The other is working his way to the top the hard way. In the league this season, there hasn't been a winner in the time we're battle. Gaviadini getting away, still with Gaviadini. That's a terrific goal from Marco Gaviadini. Typical Gaviadini work. And welcome to Roca Park and to a double derby decider that won't be allowed to finish on level terms. The tension and drama has switched to Wearside, where Newcastle aim to win their first derby under the control of Jim Smith, and Sunderland hope to put their suspect home record behind them. It's the first leg of a semi-final playoff for a place at Wembley, the perfect stepping stone to Division One. Later we'll be finding out how Swindon and Blackburn get on in their first leg of their semi-final. But the action starts here at Roker. Your match commentator is Roger Thames. It's just three years since Sunderland's first experience of the playoffs sent them crashing down into the third division. The fact they now stand three games and will return to the first is testimony enough to the skillful rebuilding of manager Dennis Smith. Before the season started, the Roker men were the least fancy of the region's three second division clubs to sustain a promotion challenge. Only Paul Hardyman and Paul Gracewell were brought in to build on last season's consolidation. But Sunderland have weathered the storms, especially a disastrous start to the new year, and the teamwork that's developed could yet carry them all the way. The side will certainly be boosted by the return of skipper Gary Bennett, one of only three survivors from the playoff nightmare against Gillingham in 87. His job today, curbing the threat of the number one strike force in the league. 36 goal Mick Quinn limped out of last Saturday's Tyne Tees derby when Newcastle's dream of automatic promotion was crushed under the weight of Middlesbrough's battle for survival. But he's recovered from a knee injury and takes his place in a United side that must quickly show the morning at Ayrson Park has done nothing to undermine their own self-belief. The top two spot was within their grasp at one stage and they must surely regard the playoffs in a different light than the North East rivals. Manager Jim Smith has reacted boldly to last weekend, recalling Billy Askew to midfield in place of Kevin Dillon, a move designed to give United extra width on the left. Dillon is on the bench. Referee Vic Callow from Solihull. One of the great rivalries in football moves on to a higher plane. This is the 120th time we're derby, and surely never have the stakes been higher. Newcastle attacking the forward end to our left into the breeze in the first half and of course wearing their chain strip of yellow and green conditions as near perfect for football as you could expect and tension nerves and pressure far more obstacles to overcome than anything else and kevin scott there one of the few northeast players in the Newcastle lineup from Easington. I know what this game is all about. And the new boy Billy Askew, in fact, the other. Burridge, long kick forward. One by Armstrong. Scott straight underneath it. Gaviadini to Gates. And Gates brought down there by Aitken. Armstrong, a little bit aggressive there. Aitken smiling. Aitken, of course, he's seen so many old firm derbies, 50-odd, and uh, now experiencing what it's like at Roker Park. It'll be Ruben Agbula to hit this one forward. Then it's a McPhail up ahead of him to aim at an early test for the Newcastle defence. Scott was there. Hardiman and Scott belts it clear. Agbula, the back man for Sunderland, wearing 11 but playing at left back and looking to release the number three, Hardiman, who's operating in midfield. Aitken, nice and cool. Ransom has it there by Hardiman. And the referee, Mr Callow, awards the free kick. Newcastle there getting an early test at the back. John Anderson gives this free kick. 
Great fail, Gabbiadini. Christensen. And Newcastle have another free kick. Christensen operating in a central midfield role today. Had quite an influence on these last few games of the season, of course. Three goals in the last five games. And not being used as a sweeper today. And this is Stimson. Askew's first touch. There'll be plenty of diagonal crosses put in like that. Powers knocked it away. Ransom now. Good ball in. Graceful there. Paul Graceful, whose influence in midfield has been so critical in Sunderland's promotion surge. And his experience too required. Newcastle, the more experienced side. A lot of throw in there from Christensen. Armstrong back underneath it. Askew. Putting it out wide for Agbula, blasting it into the crowd. This is no day for defenders to show their skills, but under pressure, it will be safety first all the way. Something under pressure, it's another long effort from Christensen. Armstrong once again doing great work in defence. Stimson beating Gowers for it, real collision there, and Stimson came off first. And the sign there of the competitive edge of this game. Not impressed. Just four minutes gone. How is in the book? Tackle on Stimson. You can expect players to make critical challenges in a game like this. Stimson certainly went cartwheeling. Now Brock and Askew for Anderson. Anderson tries one. John Anderson with four goals already this season. By his standards, has been in sparkling form in front of goal. And certainly looking to fire it in. Just drifting away from Tony Norman. Armstrong, who's already won four or five. Very good challenges in the air. Hardiman goes down. And they're really getting stuck in now. with the challenge there. Ransom two go into the book. So two books in the first six and a half minutes. Gates the victim of it. Now Agbula with this free kick. Hit towards Armstrong, but Askew can deal with it comfortably. Kay can knock it in. Ransom finds McGee. McGee shot by Gates. McGee protesting there. And Gates went down there. Incident off the ball, and they've certainly got to calm it down. It's getting well out of control. And it's boiled over straight away there. Paul Grayson in there trying to calm it down. Ransom Armstrong is. Eight or ten players there, Gates and Quinn having a little go at each other. Oh. Really turbulent start to this game. Referee having a word with Hardiman and Ransom. It's been booked already, of course, Ransom. And Buda turns it square. And somebody's gone out of the box again. It was Armstrong. Off the ball incident. And Gray was concentrating on Ed Buller's free kick. Christensen now is there exchanging words, which is something of a euphemism. The referee having a word now with Gary Bennett, Sunderland skipper. An experienced referee, Mr. Callow. He certainly won't want to see any nonsense, so I think he's saying. If you don't calm it down, lads, he's having a word with the Newcastle skipper too. But there's going to be players off. Both teams really fired up for this. Managers down on the bench. McGee turning now, chance to run. McPhail. McPhail gets the challenge in. Grace will away with it. Christensen won it back, Stimson, 
there by Aitken, Askew into space for McGee. Little flick over Bennett. and turning will provoke the challenges, that's for certain. Newcastle fans stretched right across the Roper end. And uh, definitely the minority today. Christensen. Easy for Agbula. Fail jumping well. Gates collects it. And behind Scott and Gabby Nini away now. And Scott was able to recover. And Gabby Nini knew away from Scott there, the old G-men working together well there, with Gates in the role of provider, and Gabby Adini couldn't capitalise. Bennett again under it, Gates with the flicked header, time and space available to Newcastle. Stretch and Kula and Quinn, Quinn turning. Now it's Brock. This is dangerous for Sunderland. Quinn can play it in. McGee's there in the middle. And Askew. And Askew, the frustration. The first really dangerous break by Newcastle. Askew was coming in from that left side position. And firing the shot, but just off target. And Bennett comes forward. Gabby Adini. And Scott noticeably had come deep with him. Scott pushing right up with Gabby Adini. He certainly enjoys the scrap, Kevin Scott. And uh, there's plenty of that around so far today. McPhail lifting it forward towards the central defensive partner, of Bennett. He's got the little touch on. It's a goal kick to Newcastle. Gary Bennett, missed the Oldham game with a growing strain. Never been on a winning side yet against Newcastle, but looking to break that duck today, of course. Bennett. They can beat my Armstrong. Sunderland had the throw. Armstrong. And Gates tackled by Scott. Scott and Anderson, it looks, prepared to switch from Gates and Gaviadini rather than going man for man at all. Armstrong looking to knock it in there. Is that Ramsey? A rare appeals for hands with the control. Play continues with McGee not quite able to rock Bennett there. Kay looking to release Gabbiadini. Flying chance there from Scott was picked up by Hours. And Gary Hours who scored the last two games, saw the opening up emerge in front of him, but not able to find the power. Possession. Brock ahead. Christensen is through the middle. McGee's 
still going. It's loose in midfield. Stimson and Bennett will challenge for it. Bennett gets away. Aitken again with a foul. And down goes Armstrong now. And Stimson. Well, really, the way the challenges are going in here, it's not easy for the referee to judge which one's to book and which not. He really could be on his second pencil if he wanted to be. And he's trying to keep the game moving. And he's trying to keep it under control. And he's still smiling. And look where they are out there. And it's really building up now at Roker Park. Both sides of the borders, the noise quite deafening. And Agbula, who's been knocking these free kicks in, plays it square for Kane. John Kane will be a novelty. But he saw the space was there to hit. And Burridge able to deal with it fairly comfortably. Two number sevens there, and Brace will winning out, but not for long. Quinn. Another man down. Play continues. And the man hobbling. Norman throws it out now for John Kay. Scott barges in to Gabaldini there. That'll give Derek Wright the physio the chance to come on. Scott there, guilty man. Meanwhile, on the centre line. Injury there on Ray Ransom, Physio Derek Wright giving the treatment. Dennis Smith there alongside his chairman Bob Murray. Smith looking very controlled. And Ray Ransom being helped off there by both physios. I think I've thought before O'Brien no, coming straight on and that'll involve a certain degree of shuffling first they've got this free kick to deal with Hours Gabbiadini with the overhead it's not clear yet Burridge is punched and comes off McGee eventually Newcastle still under pressure here Stinson, that was a brave header and Stinson can whack it clear Grace will Nice little header there, Kay beats Hours. Sunderland still pressing. Bennett looking to turn. The challenge was by Scott to look for the penalty, but it wasn't going to happen. It was good sustained pressure though from Sunderland. Gabbiadini, Aitken was in there. Bennett. And the ball was definitely away before the tackles came in. Gabbiadini and O'Brien there, substitute, moving forward. And it's now for Brock. A certain amount of reshuffling for Newcastle. Christensen has gone into the right-back position, as you'd expect. But it's McGee now coming forward. And Norman could afford to let that one go. He had a look at it and knew he had it under control. Brian who scored in the midweek friendly in Derry for Newcastle. Very small, encouraging and urging. Well, not much encouragement needed to the Sunderland midfield so far. They've been flat out from the gun, as it were. Now Kay breaking the overlap. Kay with a chance to cross. Another wasted opportunity there, rather, by John Kay. A lot of good work there. John Kay. Was an ever-present in Sutherland's third division championship side and getting forward there well 
final cross rather disappointing. Quinn and McPhail, Quinn's little flick, then it though covering Angula, Hardiman, Gates, shot there from Anderson. Brian chipping in with a word. Free kick. Another chance for Agbula. Agbula. Quinn jumping, but it, he fell the wrong way. Racer has knocked it forward. Gavin in a little flick and Armstrong. And Burridge as Armstrong piles in. And Armstrong saw the chance then. He's an extremely powerful figure and he didn't hold out of that challenge. And nor to his credit did John Burridge, who did remarkably well to hang on to the ball. Well into stoppage time at the end of the first half. That is the half-time whistle. Anybody who's ever been to a time clear derby, you know this is the game we might have expected. Gabbiadini had one chance when he got away, but it's been tight, it's been hard, it's been extremely physical, and there's absolutely nothing in it at half-time. So Roker Park, playoff semi-final, first leg, in Sunderland, nil, Newcastle United, nil. <laughs> Sutherland get the second half underway, playing into the wind, such as there is in the second 45 minutes. Although the pressure may be on Sutherland to produce the favourable result in the first leg, their manager Dennis Smith was more than happy to be level because he says their away form being so impressive rather cancels out Newcastle's advantage in the second leg. Certainly at Roker Park, Sunderland had the poorest record of the top six clubs. Only won two of the last seven here at Roker in the promotion running. That's West Ham and Stoke. Stimson, Askew. O'Brien, on for Ransom, remember. Bennett. O'Brien challenging Armstrong. Aitken square for Christensen operating in place of Rents at a right back. Kevin Brock. Tackle from Agbula. O'Brien. Armstrong challenging. Nice little flick that by Brock for Christensen. And Quinn despairing there, he didn't get the service, but Aitken might still keep it going. Christensen with a second chance to throw the ball in. And away there by McPhail, Christensen again. Tackle from Hardiman. Hardiman supplementing as the extra left back when necessary. And Christensen looking to hurl one of his long throws to the crowded box. Farrell beat Quinn to it. Knocked back in by O'Brien, but with no real chance of danger. Jim Smith, Bobby Saxton there, knowing the first division was once within their grasp, now having to go for it a second time. Armstrong, it's out, very small. Suspicion of hands there, but not deliberate, I suppose, according to the referee. Aitken calmly threading it through for Brock. Christensen. And Brock taking that beautifully on the run. Can he provide the cross? Well cut out by Tony Norman. That was a real piece of quality football. And Kevin Brock certainly took it superbly on the run. Great control. He got forward and the cross well cut out by Tony Norman. Out wide for Hardiman. Christensen. And Christensen holds his head in his hands. Kind of seem to turn into him a rather strange sort of leap. Nothing really 
serious about the challenge, but it'd be difficult to say that it was within the law. Now Agbula. Hardiman. Gabbiadini was there, so too was Scott. Kane. Gabbiadini. Scott right there. Looking for the penalty. Looking at Mr. Gallo, who was having nothing of it. Gabbiadini turning Scott. No offence, says the referee. A few heart-stopping moments there for the Newcastle fans here. And again, there's danger. Gabbiadini. Scott is with him, forcing him out wide. And Scott again. Proving his concentration has been first class. But the danger there from Gabbiadini provoking a response from the Sunderland supporters who are back in full cry again. Burridge's kick, drifting straight into touch. Don't please John Burridge that too much. Looking very calm about it though. Gates for Gabbiadini, now Gabbiadini on the run. What can he produce this time? Hardiman is there, and Hardiman has to check and turn. And now Newcastle can clear. And again, Gabbiadini got away, and Hardiman just wouldn't fall right for him. He had to turn and check, and the opportunity had gone by then. Sutherland get the corner kick. Hardiman drifting it away. Chances turned down by some of them then. Once from Gabbiadini's break, and now from the corner kick. Armstrong. Anderson it was with the header. Here's Armstrong again. Square for Kane. Hours. Another tangle going on there. K and Quinn. The referee now going to have a word with Mick Quinn. The ref has earned his money, which is nothing too considerable either. too many and McGee obviously furious with him for that it was definitely unnecessary I presume it's going to be yellow yes and he just pushed his luck too far and Big Callow was having none of it Sutherland who had the free kick. They've got Ben forward. Bennett is up there. And McPhail was at the far post and couldn't either get a header to it or keep the ball in play. John McPhail. One of the two that Dennis Smith brought from York City and who proved such immense value. Another one needs a few introductions, of course. Mr. Gabbiadini. Aitken and Armstrong there, Armstrong penalised, all the foul. Anderson with the kick. It's wide for Stimson, who has to chase for that one rather. Well, they've certainly thrown that advantage away, unless they can create something again now. Askew with the ball in. They were rather hurried into things there through a somewhat careless kick. Askew couldn't keep it going as he would have wanted. Stimson, ball comes off ours.
20 minutes gone in the second half. Still no score. Game here in September, of course, was goalless as well. The game has never lacked incident. And there's so much at stake. It's not the sort of occasion interest can wane. delivers this time quick little flick but McGee looking to bring it down and turn and for once it looked as though McGee might get some sort of room in the box it came to him at a difficult angle with York and the third division with Sunderland and looking to add the second division promotion to his list of honours as a manager certainly done an outstanding job since he came to Roker Park 
Christensen pumping it towards McPhail and McGee. McGee picks it up and turns well. O'Brien, now O'Brien can hit them. Bennett right in the way. Quinn now, and Brock. There'll be something on here for Newcastle. And Bennett lifts that one way over his own crossbar again. Just not willing to take any sort of a risk. With Newcastle threatening danger. McGee there towards the goal line. There's McGee with McPhail, his marker. The central defenders are up there as well. Anderson just running through your picture there. Brock, a little touch on the near post. And Anderson, and the ball's loose, and Quinn. And Alice this time concedes the corner. And Quinn in the dangerous position there with the ball loose. Another corner. Ball has come for it. Half got it. Anderson. And McGee turns. And Brock. Ball in his back. Ball comes again. That's an excellent take. That's real confidence and quality. Came the first time. Didn't quite get it. But it didn't stop him reacting just as positively the second time. And in the director's box there in the light suit, John Hall. His first game, I think, as a United, as a Newcastle director. And O'Brien with yards in front of him. And Brock. With a McGee ahead. And this is Brock. Barnes on again. He's got the power to get back. And Buna. A really barnstorming finish now. Gabbiadini looking to be out of his starting box. Stimson with the tackle. And Graceful and O'Brien, and it's loose on Aitken. Aitken. Bennett. Armstrong. Gates now. Gabbiadini looking to get away. And Gabbiadini. was there. Newcastle's covering exemplary. John Kay with the throw. Time running out for Sunderland in this first leg. They've got the corner kick. Now Newcastle have to regroup. All back there. And it will a little flick off the line there by Christensen from Gabbiadini. The referee's blown for a collision. Bend down in the middle. And there was such a collision there, it was Scott. And I suppose you could have predicted it would have been Scott putting his head in there. And equally predictably, Armstrong. They both put into battling performances. the Sunderland fans will have no complaint at the commitment and the approach of their team today very much the outsiders in this playoff foursome and Newcastle's team may well have started playoff favourites and they all know they've still got it to do in the second leg time is ticking away if Sunderland are to go into St James's Park with an advantage minute left on our watch of normal time but there will be a few minutes of stoppage time surely Quinn turns, McPhail brings him down, and the free 
against Newcastle's Quinn straight up along with the action. Into stoppage time now. Referee checking his watch. Mr. Callow has had as hard an afternoon as anyone. Christensen. Hours was under it. O'Brien for Askew. Again, Hours battling to it, scrambling anything to get to the ball. I mean, the commitment has just been unbelievable for these two teams. Scott with a little flick on, and Quinns looks to turn, and McGee! And Bennett gets the tackle in, and then Pula and Sutherland escape there, and Quinn and McGee so nearly struck, he denied there, and it's Sutherland who break. And Gaviadini is chasing. Paying too much attention. Stimson, the guilty man, there goes into the book. All comments to the linesman, I presume. And now, with three minutes of stoppage time gone. Hardiman has the job, and Paul Hardiman gives Sunderland the advantage. Hardiman, the penalty king. Here goes Hardiman, and Burris has saved it. Pulls off the save, and both sides erupt again. They're mobbing Burridge, they're jumping down there in the road for him, in the back of white. And Hardiman, and Burridge was down there, and got a hand to it. And John Burridge, the 38, the most experienced, the oldest man on the pitch, brings a career's worth of composure to bear. Hardiman now being booked. What a astonishing game. Well, red cards come out, Hardiman's off. Hardiman being sent off there. And this game really has boiled over in stoppage time in the most extraordinary way. Hardiman perhaps protesting that Boric might have moved. And Newcastle and Barrage to thank through Hardiman's thoughts. What must he be thinking? He's missed the penalty and now sent off. And Burridge, his heart thumping. Five minutes of stoppage time. And the referee says that's it. And Newcastle delighted with the nil-nil draw. And Aitken was led by example. What a smile there. It's been Newcastle's experience and composure that's been the telling factor in this game. Unbelievable commitment from Sunderland, who gave it all, as did both sides in a tempestuous game. The cheers are from the Newcastle fans, and the man who will take the salute will be John Burridge. He pulled out the save, and he goes to the fans. He's seen it all in his career, but he found something extra today. The most experienced man produced the telling moment. The scoreline blank, Sunderland nil, Newcastle United nil, but a game full of incident and everything still to play for at St James's Park on Wednesday night.
We, we wanted a win, obviously, I mean, and like to have gone back with a win, but to come away from home in a two-leg affair and get the draw, I mean, um, although sunderland has got a tremendous away record, we've got a very good home record, and we've got to be looking to be the favourites to go through. Fantastic determination from everybody, right from the start. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, was, it was going to be difficult for, for anybody to play football today, and um, both sides were totally committed, and everybody stood up and were counted. Um, and, I, I mean, the referee booked a few, had a few problems, but I thought it was a difficult task for any referee today. We went out with, with the desire to win. Uh, straight from the off we went and we, we worked extremely hard, closed people down, created chances, but we didn't put the chances away. It wasn't a game for the faint-hearted. Well, definitely not, no, but it, it, was, it was a cup tie. It was, uh, it was what you expect for, of a local derby, and uh, it was tattles going in, which I thought people had forgot how to do. Obviously, the game was buzzing right from the word go, but, I mean, those last few minutes, those last few seconds were unbelievable. Well, they were, yes. I mean, uh, the linesman gave a penalty. I don't think the referee gave it. I think the linesman gave it. We can actually have a look at it now. Yeah, there's there's Gavidini going through. Going through, and he's, he's, he's with Stimson. They've got there, and they're pushing and pulling a little bit at one another, by the looks of it. And he's gone across him. Now, if gavis has got there first, He's definitely brought him down, but from there you can't really tell. And the linesman you'll see, which is, which is right there, he's got the best view of the lot. And uh, he's decided it was a penalty. Yeah, the lad strikes it well. Budgie's ready, he's gone down well, it's a great save. I mean, it's a super save. And uh, he's up, I mean, this, this is where Budgie's good, isn't he? I mean, he's very agile, he's up and he's at it again. Now, that's where Paul's wrong. Uh, he... The referee's decided he's got to go, and looking at that, you know, he's possibly right. Now we can see that uh, Marco Gavidini going through and... Yeah. Paul doing his best. Well, uh, Stimo's with him and uh, Gavardini, they're both pushing one another a little bit, but Stimo's got to the ball first and knocked it out. I mean, uh, it, it only confirms what we thought from off the bench. It was a very, very, very harsh decision. And then again, the penalty. Uh, well, he was, he's placed it and Budgie's read it the right way, made a fantastic save and then recovered very well. Got what about the follow-up? Got his hands on it and Adam and frustrations came through as he tried to kick his head off. Fortunately, Budgie's all right. Uh, that's the thing, because that would have been even worse if he had actually injured him. Uh, he's not, so uh, Budgie will be there on Wednesday and Paul won't. What's the atmosphere like in the dressing room after that game? The lads are all right. They know they've played well. They know they've created enough chances. And uh, we know now that we've only got to score one at Newcastle with, because we've stopped them from scoring here. And, and they've got to score two to beat us. And on the, the past performances, they've not been able to achieve that. We've won six out of our last seven away games. So we're fairly buoyant and uh, we're all right. Just a bit sorry for Paul Hardiman. Well, there's a, lot, a long way, long way to go yet. As I said, it's going to be just as tight and it's just as difficult and could well go down to penalties. And, of course, you're without Ray Ranson on Wednesday. Yeah, Ray's got a um, very bad hamstring, I would think. Uh, it, it, even if we got to Wembley, he'd be touch and go whether he was fit for that. Well, we mustn't forget that one of our region sides needs an opponent at Wembley for their playoff final. Swindon Town were trying to put their backroom troubles behind them when they met Blackburn Rovers this afternoon. Our reporter at Ewood Park is Rob McCaffrey. Time after time Blackburn make the playoffs, time after time they stumble before the line. Swindon tripped them up at Ewood Park, chance after chance they created, chance after chance they missed. Geno save from Duncan Shearer. In fairness, it was a day on which Blackburn pressed heavily on the self-destruct button. Sellers and Ali Dawson falling over themselves in their eagerness to give Swindon a first goal. David Kersley picked up the pieces. Steve White turned and picked out a beauty. 1-0 on the half hour. Scott Sellers has been the man behind Blackburn's most dangerous work all season. The left foot is the key, though sometimes more than skill is needed, particularly in playoff games, luck is equally important. It was all Swindon in the second half, the prompting of White and Shearer enough to unnerve even the most experienced of keepers. Terry Genner will employ the heavy roller this summer. By now all the danger was pouring down Swindon's right-hand side. David Kerslake ran riot, then McLaughlin and Steve White just couldn't connect. Duncan Shearer managed to connect though with 55 minutes gone from Bowden's free kick, ruled out for climbing all over David Mayo. That's where it was, ref. But they didn't have to wait long. Steve Foley picked out the top corner with a volley from the very top draw. It was almost too quick for the camera. It was certainly too quick for Geno. 
Blackburn responded by sending on Andy Kennedy for Frank Stapleton. Suddenly, Sellers had found his target, Kennedy's header. But Fraser Digby looked confident all afternoon. It was felt the playoffs might put pay to Alan McLaughlin's World Cup chances with the Republic of Ireland. McLaughlin looked sharp. Even now, he might continue to strengthen his hand. Coming up, Blackburn's lifeline, courtesy of Ross McLaren's indecision in defence and Andy Kennedy's willingness to chase a lost cause. A lost cause that turned into an opportunity. The story of the goal, the story of the match. Swindon and Blackburn do it again on Wednesday. So the attention now switches to the second leg of the second division playoffs in midweek. The intense rivalry between Sunderland and Newcastle continues at St James Park on Wednesday night. They resume with a clean sheet thanks at the end of 90 minutes to the man they call Budgie. Good night. Here goes Hardiman. And Burridge has saved it. And Burridge pulls off the save. And both sides erupt again. 